And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Ephragia, which was a request from Crow via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. Ephragia was a basal sauropodomorph that lived in the late Triassic in what is now Baden-Württemberg, Germany, in the Burrishen Quarry. It looked like other sauropodomorphs with a long tail and claws. It was medium-sized and lightly built, and estimated to be about 20 to 23 feet or 6 to 7 meters long. At first, Ephragia was thought to be small, at around 6.6 to 9.8 feet or 2 to 3 meters long, but it turns out that was based on juvenile fossils. Yeah, it happens. That one was that long. It just wasn't the length of the adult. <laughs> <laughs> and then in 2003, Yates estimated that adults were 21 feet or 6.5 meters long. It's quite a bit bigger. Yep. Although still pretty small for a sauropod. Maybe not a late Triassic sauropodomorph, though. Yeah. Sauropodomorphs are a little bit different. At least they're early ones. Technically, all sauropods are sauropodomorphs. <laughs> <laughs> Ephragia had a small pointed triangular skull and a somewhat long neck that was thin. It also had low neural spines on the tail and gracile hands and feet. It may have been bipedal or quadrupedal. It had long fingers and thumbs that it could use to grasp food. Now, its wrist shape may have allowed it to walk on all fours, although not everybody agrees on that. Some think that the lower arm couldn't rotate in a way to put its hands on the ground, and then that would mean it could only walk on two legs. And Fragia's second finger was longer than its third finger. It was herbivorous, although it was originally thought to be carnivorous, but then gastrolists were found in association with one of the specimens. Specifically, there's 14 small, smooth pebbles that von Huhn reported in 1932. The type and only species is Ephragia minor. It was named after Eberhard Frage, who found the fossils. The fossils were found in 1902 when Albert Burer, a stonemason, was trying to reach some hard white sandstone in a quarry for building. They had to remove about 20 feet or 6 meters of softer marl. To dig down to it in the cliff? Well, they had to remove the marl, then they got to the hard white sandstone, and then they found the fossils. Mmm, cool. And a lot of fossils were found in the marl and the underlying soft sandstone. When the quarry was closed from 1906 to 1914, Byrd donated the fossils to Eberhard, Eberhard Frage, who was a professor at the State Museum of Natural History, Stuttgart. The fossils were first thought to be part of three already named dinosaurs, Teratosaurus minor, Celosaurus fragi, and Paleosaurus diagnosticus. And the fossils included vertebrae, a right hind limb, and a pubic bone. Other fossils have since been found, including some in large slabs, though they're not fully prepared. But other fossils found include an incomplete skull, vertebrae, gastralia, ribs, humerus, pubis, femora, tibia, fibula, astralagus, end of the right pez, and more. So lots of different parts. Yeah, that's good. I guess you didn't list the hand there, but there's a little bit of the hand too. When you have the hand, the feet, the head, and a whole bunch of other pieces, that gives you a really good idea for what the animal looked like and maybe even how it behaved. Yes, but there was some confusion with assigning these fossils. So Friedrich von Huhn first described the fossils in 1907 and 1908 as Teratosaurus minor. And at the time, Teratosaurus was thought to be a theropod. It's now considered to be a Rausukian, which is a group of archosaurs more closely related to crocodilians than to birds and non-avian dinosaurs. The species name, Minor, refers to Teratosaurus Minor being smaller than Teratosaurus suvicus, which is the type species. See, that's one of those problems when you put two things in the same genus. <laughs> going, <laughs> going back to last week's episode, yeah. yeah. Von Huhn also named Celosaurus phragi based on a partial skeleton, but Celosaurus is now a synonym of Platiosaurus, and we talked about that in episode 152. In 1912, Fraz reported two partial skeletons that he assigned to Thecodontosaurus diagnosticus. However, his health wasn't great, so he didn't formally describe him, and it was a nomum nudum. Von Huhn used the species name when he redescribed Fraz's specimens in 1932 after Fraz died, and he called them Paleosaurus question mark diagnosticus. It was meant to be a provisional name. In 1959, Oscar Kuhn said that the name Paleosaurus was already being used for an archosaur named back in 1836, so he renamed it to Paleosauruscus. Paleosaurus is a pretty cool name. Okay, ancient 
Saurian situation. Yeah. Ancient lizard. Ancient archosaur. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Sherig first used the name Paleosauriscus diagnosticus in 1967, although Cope had named Paleosauriscus frasierianus in 1878. There were a lot of classifications, but the latest seems to be that that one that Cope named was a phytosaur, archosaur, and it was based on a tooth. <laughs> yeah, that's not the thing you want to stick it in the genus with. Yeah. If it's a sauropodomorph. <laughs> <laughs> in 1973, Peter Galton assigned all of Fraz's specimens to the new genus Ephragia and named Ephragia. He named it Ephragia diagnostica. In 1985, Galton and Bob Barker suggested Ephragia be a junior synonym to Celosaurus gracilis. In 2003, Adam Yates analyzed fossils from the late Triassic in what is now Germany and found Celosaurus fossils belong to either Celosaurus gracilis, which he assigned to Platyosaurus gracilis, and the rest was Teratosaurus minor, Celosaurus fragii, and Paleosaurus diagnosticus. But Ephragia was named first. I really like that it's Paleosaurus diagnosticus, and it's like one of the least diagnostic finds. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Now, the species name for Ephragia was more complicated since von Huhn had written in 1908 in the same book about Teratosaurus minor and Celosaurus fragi. Teratosaurus minor appeared on the page first, so Yates chose minor to be the species name, and then the full name of the dinosaur became Ephragia minor. It's very complicated. So basically, it had been named with a wrong genus before, but since the species name was associated with it of minor, then when eventually it got its own genus, <laughs> then it we had to keep that species name. Yes. And it was kind of a toss-up which species name he would use. Mm. But minor was technically earlier by being earlier on the page. Yes. <laughs> sort of like Tyrannosaurus and Dynamosaurus. Tyrannosaurus is definitely a better one. We're lucky that one came first. Yeah, I don't know if Dynamosaurus would have been as famous. It probably would be. It just wouldn't be as cool. Mm. We are also used to Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, we're pretty biased. <laughs> now, Yates did not consider two other species that von Huhn had named based on fragmentary fossils. That was Tyrannosaurus trosingensis and Thecodontosaurus hermanius. Galton in 1990 considered both of those species to be junior synonyms of Ephrasia diagnostica. Galton said Ephragia was, quote, an ideal ancestor for the more recent Ankysaurus, end quote, which had some advanced features, like the first metacarpal was broader and the first ungule was shorter. So a little bit of differences in the hand. Mm -hmm. Galton also mentioned a pathology in one of the skeletons, so a nearly complete skeleton with an incomplete skull, where the right humerus was shorter compared to the left. He wrote, quote, as the area of the fracture is healed and well finished, the animal must have lived for quite a while after the break, end quote. Must have felt weird. Probably not great. <laughs> yeah. In 2017, Mario Bronzati and Oliver Raut described the brain case of Ephrasia minor. They CT scanned it, and they found that the brain case anatomy of sauropods is a result of modifications in their evolutionary history, though it's unclear if it's due to, quote, rapid and drastic morphological change, end quote, or because there's just a small number of brain cases preserved, so we don't know. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well, so check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.